All right, welcome back. I'm going to do what I think is probably going to be the final video for the series on this Terry, probably. Unless something comes up way in the future, as I plan on putting some miles on this bike. Um, this video is called The Redning. So I'm going to put all these red parts on here and finish this nerdy red uh, anodizing build. The last thing I'll probably do is the pedals because I need a little bit of work. So I bought these black and red pedals with the little red um, pins. I didn't like them. They're actually quite a bit narrower than like a stock bmx -y pedal. Um, I got fat feet. I want the whitest pedal possible. I really like the black. Nothing else is black. So I went and found a different pedal by basically the same company. They're a lot whiter, like a grayish or a titanium silver. And the pins are interchangeable, so I'm going to swap out all the silver pins from these onto the black pedals, and all those red pins onto these gray pedals. And I think I'll be able to tolerate this look. I think it kind of matches this Durace derailleur pretty well, because it's kind of got a darker gray finish than a lighter gray finish, and a little black. So that will be, like, totally cool, like, totally. And yeah, they're, like, more than a half inch wide, wider. This is, should support my big fat Birkenstocks. Um, I just did a video earlier today on tapping all of these threads. So now I can get all the bolts and rack mounts and things in. So I'm going to replace this one silver bolt here for the dynamo light. And I'm hoping I got the only stainless red anodized bolts I could find from like TMU or something. Um, they're red, they're stainless, not alloy, so I can trust them for things like racks. So I'm hoping they'll be long enough to uh, put this rack on. It's got this rack, it's got a spacer. I really like that they're too long so I could get a nut on the back. In the tapping video, I went crazy and also went ahead and tapped a red uh, tubeless, pressed the jam nut, put it on, and put the red valve cap on. So I'll do that in the back to make it match. Come on, little red. Ooh, 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 these are as long as these other bolts. So I'm definitely going to put these weird red, hopefully strong enough, bolts in for the rack and in for the dynamo light. And if I ever put anything else on, I'll use them. Oh, I do also have the Shift Boss, the little um, barrel adjuster adapter. It's an Allen. I think I might use one of these. I'll definitely have to cut it down some. Oh my fucking dog. Cut down four or five millimeters. She's only come one length. I'll also have this cheesy Chinelli hipster bar tape. I'm gonna wrap it back here, cut, hover up the zip tie, and hide this one broken braze on, which is a shame. And maybe someday I'll get out the old porch and fix it. Oh my god, my dog. I also got some other red things. So let's do this thing. Booyah. There we go. This little jam nut had a weird burn, did not want to start the right way, flipped it over and it started the other side. So now it should be cleared. Yay! I just ran a tap through it, it should be golden. Nice, really long valve stem. And a red alloy valve cap. I got this cheapo locking skewer set. And I also got this little cheap little red carabiner scrunchy thing. Gonna put the key to this locking skewer set on this keychain and probably a house key. So just leave this on the bike at all times. And you know, the, the bike lock key. This bike will just have its own dedicated lock and house key. I don't have to worry about nothing. I can just hop on whenever I want and take right off. All these red anodizings are not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. These are quite a bit lighter than everything else, whatever. I got my hollow M5 for these Vela Orange locking skewers. I don't like using um, different locking skewers, but I think they'll be fine. In the past, I've mixed and matched sets, taken the, the threaded rod out of the Vela Orange ones and put them red anodized ones. In the past, I found a source where I could get these Vela Orange ones red anodized from the company who probably makes them for both them and sunlight. But, no longer. Oh, this looks like it's extra long. Um, 
So this quick release is Com Extra Long and Threaded, so you can do 126, 130, or 135. Sometimes I will put an extra um, jam nut on the end, or sometimes I'll just take them in and cut five millimeters off. You just key, boo! So this key, instead of being an Allen head, it's like a five side instead of a six side, so you need this key. To tighten or loosen these dudes. Just it all the way up, making sure it's straight. Give them some righty tighty. Cool. Still looks straight. Cool. <laughs> Get down one knee. Do this front as well. Notice I'm not undoing the brake so the brake pads can hold the wheel more or less in place. It's dropped down like an inch. But... It's sort of acting as a third hand, kind of keeping it up close to where I want, kind of holding it up for me. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, right through. No probs. Fit, 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 fit. Come on. Oh, you're home. All right, lifting it up both sides. I'm trying to make sure the wheel stays straight. It's probably pretty close. Why are these pads? This pad is hitting crazy low on this side. It's something weird. <clears throat> these brake pads hitting super low. The other one's hitting a little high. I think maybe the wheels in crooked. But now I'm thinking maybe the wheels in crooked. I set the brake pads up. So got my knee underneath the wheel, lifting all the way up, lifting all the way up, tighten this guy down. Sometimes when you tighten these things down, you know, they tend to walk. Tight down and the teeth grip and go blah, 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 and pull the wheel crooked. Make sure it's cool. That looks a lot better. Still not perfect though. I'm gonna have to adjust these brakes a little bit. Ah, dynamo. Let's do a fun one. So I stole this blue reflective bungee cargo net off of uh, my basket bike, off the Nothing Special Schwinn, but I found a red reflective cargo net. These, come, these things come in different sizes and some of them are ridiculous. Let's hope this one's reasonable. Ridiculous is nice when you do big giant loads, but then it kind of sucks when you have no loads, it's just like so much. Where little ones are nice when you have no load, but then you can't actually get anything with them. This looks ridiculous. Yeah, the ones with three hooks are very big usually. But it is all red, and it's got little reflective stripies all woven in it, so it's real bright and reflective. It makes it look even more bright and red. Six hooks. It's more tangly than four hooks. <laughs> These hooks are really extra small too. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. I can stuff stuff under here and take it off and really stuff stuff up and hook on the rack weird and up over the handlebars into itself. Whatever you gotta do. I don't know if you see some of my videos, but I've definitely packed entire bikes in boxes and set them on the front of my rack. I put like two bungee cargo necks hooked together up and over into the stem and had the box so I could barely see over it and Road to UPS that way. I mean, I do have a truck and a station wagon, but bikes are um, just more fun, more cool. It's not red, but I want it. It's a Velo Orange water bottle cage. I couldn't put it on before because these threads weren't tapped, but now I can. I have a red specialized water bottle cage, but I don't know. I like this one better. These bolts are alloy, so I'm a little scared. I want them tight, but I'm don't want to strip them out or break the heads off. And I'm a bit of a hammer mechanic, so I'm being kind of careful. Tight! I got my sweet water bottle holder. I still got my handle stash. Anti-spill um, drink holder, which I love and I'm leaving on. I want to do this bolt. I want to do this bolt. Now, um, shift bosses do not go all the way on. There's no hole all the way through the frame, so if you use too long of a bolt, it will bottom out and cause problems. And my red alloy one, which is... I mean, it's probably like three or four threads to come right off. So I'm going to go clamp this in the vise and hex that off real quick. And that took like 12 seconds. My camera didn't even turn off. 
So I just cut like four or five threads off, hit it with the wire wheels to make sure there's no big burr, and I ran a stainless steel nut over it just to make sure that you know the threads will start just fine. So just two or three seconds. Oh yeah, it's gonna have at least six or seven threads holding it in. That is plenty. Let's do these rack bolts. Got the old one off. New ones, just the same amount of threads, maybe like one thread more. Smaller head, a little more sketchy. This thing's just pinched up against the fork blade, so it's got the spacer in there, it's, gravity's just holding it in place. Oh, this really feels like it needs to be tapped. It was gross when I did them before, and I just forced it. And I don't want to do that. And, oh yeah, it mangled these threads. No bueno. Just gonna run this tap in <laughs> through the rack, through the spacer, just like on yesterday's video. Just chomping and cleaning up those threads. Knocked a few big birds off. And I grabbed a fresh bolt, not one I just mangled the threads on. And I'm greasing it lightly. Adding grease to the bolt I'm gonna use on the other side. Let's try that again. Nice and smooth. So nice, so tight. Come on, cheap anodized Chinese stainless steel bolts. Let's get night tight and not fall off. God, it looks like there's enough room to get a nylock on the backside. I'm gonna check, because I love using nylocks on the backside of rack bolts. Because racks torque and leverage and weight and shifting. Hardware on racks loves to come loose. Little bitty nylock nut. Now with nylocks you need enough threads on the back. When you put the nut on, the threads cut all the way across the nut and all the way into the little plastic, which is the nylock. That sort of heats and expands and basically taps into that plastic and then the plastic sort of shrinks as it cools and holds a nice tight bond on that nut so it can't come off. And really with nylock or any other nuts, you want a thread poking out the backside. I see guys all the time with like the nut not holding all the way on, threads not poking through, and I haven't gone all the way through at all. And you're like, ugh, so unprofessional. A full thread poking out the back. In and engaged and legit. This is not gonna give me that, but it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty close. In the other side. Ugh, feels cruddy too. Like, Throw these bolts away. Also, having the bolts be kind of half mangled, the thread's a little gold, it's gonna make them sit tighter and not fall out. I mean, uh, some cars and stuff, hardware, actually uses nuts with the ends instead of nylock, are a little mangled on purpose. And that uh, keeps them from coming loose, kind of the same idea. Most of the chassis nuts in my truck were that way. I was like, oh, okay. So maybe these threads have been a little bummed up. It's not the end of the world, but not for me. Tappy, tappy. This tap's already a little greased and oiled. I really should have added more, but I'm being lazy and in a hurry, and I know they're like 99% fine. If it was so bad I couldn't get a bolt in at all, or more than a thread or two, I would have definitely, would have definitely oiled these dudes up. So smooth, so loose. That's how you know your real mechanics where you can work upside down and backwards and even without looking and use your fingertips to guesstimate which way is righty tighty and to get the bolt started and all that stuff. I used to work under the dashes on cars and stuff in old cars. It really didn't go fast. Remember, righty tighty is always from the bolt's perspective that you're turning, not your head. You can do it upside down and backwards. And I'm going righty tighty even though to my brain this feels very lefty loosey. Nice, it goes all the way through the nylock. You know, one more millimeter would be better, but I think this will hold. I don't have the right tool, and there are six pins on each one of these, and they use an adjustable, so this is gonna take a minute to break all these loose and swap them over from pedal to pedal. Six on each side. 12 on each pedal, 24 in total. This video is gonna be an hour. JK, I'm gonna edit it. All right, I just took half hour, 45 minutes off my life, swapping out, you know, all of these pins on both sets of pedals, and I think these look pretty good. The dark gray with a little bit of a red, 
and I think we're gonna swap them out and call this bike officially done. I did the seat post slide down on me. I didn't do one more ride without it uh, sliding down. Can't really tell. I got some grease marks and I should have a sharpie mark, make sure it's not still sliding. Because that might be a whole thing. I think sliding seat posts, the trick is to use carbon paste instead of grease. We'll see. Goodbye plastic pedals that actually love a lot. Cheap and insignificant, totally unimportant, and just wonderful. <laughs> I pre grease these. These also have a full round lip all the way around, so they don't need a pedal washer. They're not going to chew up my cranks. Not sure if I'm actually in love with these pedals, but they look way cooler than anything else that I could find. Booty! Dope! Hipster power tape! Dang, what a waste! Could really use this on some hipster floppin' chops or something. Whatever. I do feel guilty. It's very short basically like do like a grip length with it. I don't care what I do with this. Is this right? I don't know. I'm tired. It's late. I did a terrible job. Alright. Whatever. Like forever. Hipster bar tape. Finish it off like I would bar tape. Use a little bit of just boring old electrical tape. I'm sure I have red here somewhere, like a skinnier one. Let's just start mix matching like cheesy reds with anodized reds. It starts to get even too cheesy for me. Four pretty tightly pulled wraps. Boom, cheese tastic. I don't know. I don't know why. Oh god, I wrapped this kind of terrible. Whatever. It's fun. It's cheesy. Is this red and silver enough? These pedals totally out of control? I don't know. Oh, I didn't do this bolt yet. I'm gonna do this bolt. Even though no one can ever see it. Hard to get bolts from the inside. I need like a shorter four and I don't want to go dig one out. <laughs> Maybe from this angle. Maybe I'll do the wrench trick. Hook a wrench on a four, a little leveraggio. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. I gotta go put some miles on this bike. Tomorrow I'm doing some miles in the car. I'm gonna run an errand and go visit my sister. She moved to the next town over in Vancouver, Washington. I'm gonna go see somebody in Camas, Washington about a brain jig and stuff for sale. So, probably won't get a chance to do miles on this bike. I also wanna go drop off a bike. A uh, little mongoose tune-up I did. You can drop it off at the old bike shop. See if you'll sell for me on the consignment. <laughs>